game with Ben right here, and then we'll go to Rob. Is that the best basketball you've seen in the league? He was terrific. He, he was absolutely terrific, and it started yesterday in practice. I, I think without question, yesterday's the best practice he's had since he's been here, what he brought, his energy, and the fact that he carried it over. We're really happy for him because I know how much he cares. I know how much he, he wants to do the right thing, and to see him come out and play the way he did today, it's, it's really special. Kind of, really, really happy. For kind, of, kind of same question about Sakai. We've been talking about his evolution for the, for the past month. Was this maybe the pinnacle so far? What can you say about him? I mean, he's got to be right there, the very best point guards in the country. When you think about what he does night in and night out, uh, consistently doing it, learning, learning the position as he goes through with it defensively, he's he does it. How uh, I many minutes he plays tonight? He, uh, 37. 37. And, I always ask him how you feel. He says, I'm fine, coach. But uh, the fact is, the way he distributed the ball, and, and he got he got a little excited when we when we had a chance to we give them credit. We could have really stretched it out, but but they older, experienced team stayed in it. I thought they really maintained their poise. But then uh, Z got a little excited and turned it over. They I think he scored six straight points off turnovers on where we were trying to force too much. But what he's learning how to do is make his teammates better, which is the sign of a, a point guard. The guy becoming a point guard, understanding that's his job to find a way to make his teammates better on the offensive end, and as he continues to do that, he's gonna make everybody better. And by doing that, we get better. Ryan, Mike, and Gentry. You mentioned Olivier's energy in practice yesterday. Just the intensity and energy that he had today. How do you bottle that up and get it in a more consistent basis? That is a great question. You know, if I could, if I could figure that out. Uh, and maybe, you know, last year it, it, it hit him all at once where, you know, he was playing great basketball before he got hurt. Maybe this is what it's going to be to, to get him going. But I thought he I thought he really searched out his spots on the floor. I thought he understood tonight so much where he wanted to get the ball and what he wanted to do. Never looked rushed, never looked like he was not sure what he wanted to do. And I just hope this gives him the kind of confidence that, that he can keep building on it with. Because he, he works, and you guys know him, he loves the game and he works at it. and he. He deserved this night. Rick, is that the most consistent and steady effort you've seen across 40 minutes from this team this year? Those are a lot of games that looked like that. Was this the start to finish best? You know, they 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 got a lot in the second half, and, and you got again. Uh, Rodney does a terrific job. I, I mean, he's handled a very difficult situation, and I thought he's a very poised individual. And I think the team played with a lot. Their team played with a lot of poise, and whether. Uh, the fact that we didn't play as many people tonight, we were giving up back cuts, easy baskets, but that's that's what they do. They run a really good flow motion game where, because you're really trying to work hard, they're a really good two-point shooting team, and you're trying to run them off cuts, and if you get too, uh, too aggressive doing that, they do a great job of back cutting. They did that tonight to us too many times. Uh, end of the game, we can't do what we did at the end of the game, not being ready on an out-of-bounds play, and giving up two three-point plays back-to-back, -back. I mean, those type things. But uh, but we, we beat a really good basketball team tonight. Rick, you've had, uh, yeah. had obviously a lot of good teams, but never won defensively has had numbers this team does. What do you think has made this group special? And then is it also comforting to have a game and get it done offensively when Texas does play three balls? Well, I, I think the key is we've got individuals that – want to be good good defensive players and we got individuals that can not only guard the basketball consistently well but they also can help their teammates and uh, the last couple of weeks we really tried to harp on our when we switch because we love to switch we'd like to be able to go one through five if we can with our post guys being able to stay in front of the ball and but the biggest thing that we try to get them to understand is personnel when we do switch do you understand how we need to play this particular player at this particular time? And tonight, really, some of the breakdowns, and I might be wrong when I watched the tape, but what I saw tonight, I thought our guards were, didn't do a very good job in switching situations where some of the threes they gave up, some of the good looks they got early in the game. Transition defense wasn't great. They had some looks that could very well have gone down. But to really answer your question, we, we've got a group of guys that I think that believe in defense and they want to be good at it, and that's a big part of it. Guys that want to be good at it and know that it really is something that we, we have to be good at to be the team that we want to be.
-hmm. There's a lot of things that go into it, but that's where I think, too, our guys know that we've got to get better with some things. Grant, Wes, and Noah. Ronnie said this team has the ingredients to go to the final four. I assume he knows what you're looking for as well as anyone. But what do you, you think that's true? Do you think this team has? I, I, and I would say that about his team, to the fact that this year at this point in time in the season, I'm not sure any team has just totally separated themselves. You know, there's a lot of basketball left. I mean, uh, here's what I would say. I heard Jay Villa say it today that this time a year ago today, North Carolina had the exact same record they have right now and got it turned around and got it going. Kansas a year ago today got beat by 30 points, just like Alabama did today. So it's a long way to go. Every game, again, I think all the games are big. I do. I think I always tell our team in November, if you don't think this game is big, wait to March, those November games. And um, so right now, I, I, I mean, I love this team. I think we got a chance to be as good as we want to be. And uh, I think that it's uh, up to one thing. Are we tough enough to embrace the daily grind and not worry about going to the Final Four, not want to worry about the NCAA tournament, but can we build a team that can be successful that time of year? And it starts with truly embracing the grind every single day, and it's tough because uh, we've, we've been at it a long time. And can you <coughs> knock out all the noise around you? Can you not, you know, let – whatever was out there, the noise, uh, talk about it, and just be able to come to work. And, and I, I told him today, we've got to have a, 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 a man's mentality in the fact that when we come in here and we get ready for games, it's not about being all emotional and jacked up. It's about taking care of business and knowing that it's hard to win games against a team like the University of Texas. And now I think we go to Florida next week. It's hard. And it's only going to get harder because February, teams get better. And that's why we've got to get better or we'll go backwards. Rich, you talked a minute ago about you know how hard Olivier works and how much this means to him. When when you feel that from a player, how much easier is it to kind of help them along the process? Because I know Olivier's development's kind of taking some time. Is it kind of easier to, to hang with guys when you know how much they care like that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I love him. I mean, I, I love him to death. And if I could put, the, put it on him every night, I'd love to because he really wants to be good. And he takes it. I mean, he and I have had some well, – we had a couple of weeks ago. We had a long, long talk. And it, it was a talk where he got emotional with me and just said, I don't know why, but I want to do it. And you know I want to do it. And the fact is I do know he wants to do it. And the fact is he's a guy, practice. He's coming back every night. He's going to be up there in Pratt every – or this is open, he'll be here. And when – and, and like I, I just you, you just keep working but I've also told him he's got to embrace the mental side of it more than anything understand truly what he's good at and he is good it, there's a lot of things that he, he really does well I was just so proud of him getting in a stance really trying to fix some things because the other night against uh, uh, George was the very first play of the game he blew the ball screen coverage very first play of the game and uh and I told him, I said, I know you don't want to do it. Why'd you do it? And he just said, I'm, my mind's not in the right place. I said, well, when you get it there. And he came out and practiced yesterday, and he was all over the place. And that's, that's part of the growth process. Sometimes the light comes on sooner or later for some people. But I promise you, if you ask anybody on the team that they want to see you do well, they would tell you they want because he, he cares, and he cares a great deal. So it's obviously happy. We're all happy for him. Coach, you talked a lot about that practice uh, yesterday, just the, the energy you brought, but what else specifically did he do that you kind of oh, – a lot of the inner four seeds tonight? Playing with – I mean, he had a dunk yesterday in practice, and, that, I mean, that, the whole place came to life. I mean, he went in there yesterday, and it looked like he dunked it with his armpit. And uh, <laughs> and I'm like – and I walked over and said, Where's, I mean, why, why are you holding back? Why don't you do that all the time? I mean, you know, at least try to do it. But uh, sometimes players can – put a block up but the fact is we, we try the teammates trust him you know and he, he actually was going to take himself out one time night which I was proud of but they time out came and I said to him which I don't know if I've ever said it to him how you feel you want to stay in the game and he said this is all I need I said okay stay in the game because normally he's tired I would say let's do it but uh, I know the guys were, were really happy for him Rick, I know you've been on both sides of this Big 12 SEC Challenge. Are you sorry this thing's coming to an end? 
well, this is going to be a conference game with Texas. We play, you know, so it's going to end up doing that. You know what? Uh, I think that when it started, uh, I think it was a good thing for both leagues. I, I also think that it took ESPN a couple of years to get it in this spot. You know, they wanted it from the very beginning. This is when they wanted to play sort of kind of in between the playoffs and football and that. And uh, I think it's been good for both leagues. I do. Uh, in, in some, I don't know where it is right now today, but uh, but next year we start. Is it next year we start the ACC? And then think about it. A, a year, not next year, but the next year, Oklahoma and Texas will come into the league, and and uh, so it'll be be a conference game from here on out. You know. But uh, I think the challenge. What, what the only thing I didn't like about the challenge, and I and I said it from the time that. When I went to uh, the Big 12, we were talking about doing these challenges. And I was in the Big East back when the ACC Big East started. And always somebody from the, from the um, Big East got left out. And I've never thought it was fair. you know. And then they said there was a rotation system. Well, I never saw it. I just know it seemed like Providence, Boston College, and somebody else you know. And I, and I get it. I know, I know enough about it to know it's TV pushed. The thing starting with the ACC, I think next year we'll have all of our teams, or when it starts, I think we'll have all of our teams in. Then when we come in, they'll, they'll be without one team. It's a real challenge when, uh, because, I mean, think about it, Texas A&M top spot, you know, they're not even in it. And they, you know, so this, I don't know if we can call it a real challenge because, I mean, you wish, that you could schedule the games the week before and really get the teams that you match up that you wanted. But uh, I do, I just think you got to have all the teams to play to call it a real challenge. Uh, Coach, obviously, Olivia had a great practice, but what specifically out of the matchup against the Sioux that you saw that you kept exploiting that matchup? Well, we just felt like, you know, uh, ball screen, you know, was a guy getting there, and, and they certainly are a very physical team, and they, uh, they pay a lot of attention to shooters, and so they were, I don't think they were willing to leave Santi or Josiah, those guys on the perimeter. And when we normally, you know, we, we do a couple of different things in the ball screen, and with him there, we were trying to just open the court up to give Z a lot of room to operate and try to get somebody behind him. And it was good, but, you know, they also turned us over twice at a critical time and went down and scored off of it. But uh, it goes back to where I think Zakai's just getting better and better in ball screens and starting to see the whole court. I don't know if it's underrated. I, 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 the question I asked our guys last night, I, I stopped the film last night when we were on, in a defensive possession in practice, and I saw four guys pointing, talking, and talking and helping each other. And I said, why don't we do that on offense? I said, you guys obviously understand what you're supposed to do on defense. Why can't we totally buy in and understand it's hard to play really good offense against a team like Texas that can really guard? I said, until we can – execute at the level we need to, and that means guys that screen need to screen. Guys that need to cut need to cut. We need to do a better job putting the ball where it needs to be. And I said, it's hard. So running offense, you know, you're looking for timing out of it, but you're looking for fundamental basketball. And we are a very fundamental team defensively, and when we're not playing good offense, it's because we're not very good fundamentally. We dribble the ball too much. Uh, not locked into where we need to get the ball, what we need to be looking for, but when we're locked in on the offensive end, I do think we're a good offensive team. Coach, thank you. All right, thank you all.